Hello and welcome. Let's um, talk about Steve Marriott. And um, he and I had a bit of a falling out back in the 1980s. There are various stories about this, but let me tell you what really happened. After this lovely music and fantastic animation, state-of-the-art stuff, I'll be back. Okay, Steve Marriott. Those of you who don't know who Steve Marriott was, shame on you, I think. He's been called the greatest rock vocalist of all time. I think that's possibly a bit extreme. He was great. He was the lead singer in these small faces. He went on to form Humble Pie with Peter Frampton, and then he played in a series of bands, Packet of Three, Steve Martin and the DT, Steve Martin and his band for a while, and various other permutations, because he couldn't really make his mind up about that, and he kept falling out with people, if the truth be known. And that's between probably about, what, I don't know, 85 and 1990. He died in 1991, tragically, from a house fire. It was apparently a cigarette. Um, he was prone to drinking a lot, I must be honest, let's not hold back, possibly drugs, and he was, he was a, I think it's safe to say he was a troubled character. That's not letting the cat out of the bag. Um, he started off as a child actor, really. His father pushed him into it, apparently. He played the artful dodger in Oliver in the 1960s, early 1960s for the stage version. Um, and I think he's on the, the, the actual album from the time, which I think you can still hear. He then went on to become a singer in various bands um, in the early 1960s. I think he started off doing Cliff Richard type stuff, did a cover of Move It at one stage. And he progressed eventually to, to become the lead singer of the Small Faces, which was a mod band in the mid 1960s with Ronnie Lane, Ian McLagan. Anyway, they were all quite short and they were called the Small Faces because they were quite small, really. And um, Faces in those days was a mod term for somebody who's like, um, yeah, one of the boys, possibly more towards a leader of the mods. I personally was never into mods. Um, I've never been into joining anything like that, any cultural movement. I've not really been one for that. I tend to plough my own furrow, enjoying Lots of music on the way. I never really got into mod, I'll be honest, at the time. I was more into psychedelia. I was quite young. I was at school, 13, 14, when the mod who, small faces thing really hit. Um, I'd say I was more into psychedelia, black music, uh, blues, that type of, type of thing. But it wasn't the small faces. So at the time, it sort of like passed me by, even though there were great songs that small faces did. All or Nothing was probably the one Steve Marriott wrote that. It's possibly one of the greatest pop songs of all time. But at the time, as I say, it passed me by. So by the time we get to where I meet Steve Marriott, which is possibly in the mid 1980s, um, I forget exactly when, the first time we actually met, because I was running various live music venues around London. Um, at the time, I was living the cricketers at Kennington Oval, and that was my main thing. I was there seven days a week. And Steve Marriott and the Packet of Three, which included Jim Leverton, a fairly well-known bass player at the time, they appeared as a band on the rock circuit. Now, in those days, they weren't really big icons of rock music. I mean, obviously, they're, they're, they're the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, but everyone else, really, like, you could basically go to a live music club and say, oh, there's, I don't know, there's Jimmy Page over there, there's the guy from Yardbirds over there, there's Phil May from The Pretty Things over there. You would see these people hanging around, and you'd even talk to them, and it was like a different sort of thing to now, where they'd have bodyguards around them, because at the time, they really didn't, apart from if they were, say, the Beatles or the Stones, they weren't really earning huge amounts of money. A lot of them were doing okay, but they weren't big, famous, you know, icons being put in the newspaper every week and on TV. Rock music was really counter-cultural thing at the time, and Steve Marriott by this time was into that. He was seen as somebody on the way down. Um, he was a very good performer. I wouldn't say I was blown away by Steve Marriott in the back of the three. They were good. He's a great vocalist. His songs were good. They did a lot of small faces songs, but with a rocky edge. He also did a lot of chat. He was very good with the chat, being a child actor. He was a very cocky type of guy used to. He'd put on a lot of weight by this time, and he'd compare himself on stage with 
Mickey Rooney, who was a, another child actor. Hi, everybody. This is Mickey Rooney, and welcome to my home, the home of Jan and Mickey Rooney. And he did look a bit like Mickey Rooney. He was, like, quite, quite portly. There you go. So we did shows. I never really got to know him that well. We, we weren't close pals. I suppose I put him on loads of times because he was, say, one of the acts. Like There'd be, like... Of the acts at the time, there'd be people like Wilco Johnson, Gino Washington and the Ram Jam Band, Desmond Decker, Steve Martin and the Packet of Three, Georgie Fay and the Blue Flames, and and I can't think of any more, but there, but, but there obviously were more. And these were the staple Saturday night, Friday night acts you would guarantee, not guarantee, but you would expect to get a full house with charging four pounds. So they were like, you know, the bigger end of the pub rock market, and Steve was part of that. As I say, we never really got on. He was, I got the impression, and this is something that stayed with me over the years, that he was somebody who would say something to your face, but then something he didn't actually believe. He'd always be very friendly to your face, but I got the impression, and I also knew, because I overheard a couple of things, that he didn't particularly like me. And But he was like... One of these, I don't know, these Cockney guys, um, Chas Hodges from Chas and Dave was pretty much the same. He would not tell you what he thought of you. He would always, oh, yeah, mate, come on, we're all pals and all that. And Steve was exactly like that. But you could see in their eyes there was something. And if you fell out with them over something, let's say something on the lines of, oh, don't worry about it, mate, we, we just one of those things and all that. But really, you'd find it afterwards they were actually fuming about it and they'd be moaning about you and telling people what, what a wanky you were and all that. But anyway, let's not go in there. I fell out with Steve. I think there was a touch of financials involved in this, but I can't remember what it was. But I used to do every year the final falling out was when I used to do a thing every year which was like which was like my annual payday. I basically went to university to do a law degree. So I had this legal tr training in effect. I didn't last long. I lasted t one year before I got um, thrown out for not working because I was into music. You see, I was the social secretary and I, and I basically spent all my time with the music and didn't do any law at all hardly. And so they kicked me out, quite rightly so. And um, But I had this legal background, I think. I also worked as a bookkeeper, cashier. I was assistant chief cashier at a firm of, at a very old fashioned firm of solicitors, a very big firm of solicitors near Gray's Inn. In, actually, it was in Bedford Road, which is just the back of Gray's Inn. For our part, one of our partners at the back used to look over Gray's Inn in fields which was a very nice place to be. And so I had this thing, and somehow I got to be, to book the some bands for the Grey's Inn Ball. Now, the Grey's Inn is an inn for bar barristers at Grey's Inn in Holborn. And basically, it's like an old, goes back to the 14th century, I think. And basically, these are where the barristers have their chambers and they get trained, and it's like a very... Uh, in it's a very small world, a very insular world, and somehow I they came to me because they obviously didn't know much about putting on music and hiring bands and things. So I don't know how it came about, but anyway, they came to me. It was obviously something to do with my legal backgroundy bit, um, and I got them bands for about I don't know five or six years, and every year they would be very happy. I would take the guy out for about. Six months before we we're going to book the bands, and I'd take him to see bands, and I'd, you know, meet him, and we'd go out for a drink, and we'd go and watch bands, and he would pick who he liked. And it was very picking people who had some sort of name, who were like a big name back in the 60s or whatever. And so Steve Marriott was a natural one for this. So I remember being slightly worried about it because his act, by this time, he was with an outfit called the DTs, which was a blues band from Leicester. And so they were a bit more bluesy than Small Faces-ish. And so I was slightly worried that they would, to have them as a headline act at the Grazing Ball. And then at the end, you would have the big act. At the, I remember we had Georgie Fay, we had Gina Washington, we had all the big ones. Um, and But they wanted it Steve Marriott. And so there you go. So we booked Steve Marriott and he was being paid quite a lot, as I recall. A lot more than I used to pay him in the to play in the e pub. This would be... 89, 90, 90, something like that. 
And um, basically, um, he didn't. We'd had a falling out. I seem to remember the last time he played at the Cricketers. I think that was. I can't remember. It was about. I think there was something to do with money. I think there weren't. For some reason, not enough people showed up, so he got less than he was ex expecting because it was normal that he would get a fee against a, a percentage, so he would normally walk out with a full house with £600 over. And I get the idea that there was, he was, even though he wasn't a fool, he was expecting more than he got. So there was a bit of a falling out about that. To be honest with you, I had a policy of not ripping people off or paying people exactly what they were supposed to get because you wanted them back again in, uh, two weeks time like you didn't want to get £100 off them one week and then never see him again so I would tend to think that it was probably his uh, perception I think he was drinking quite a lot of this time as well so he did get a bit leery occasionally and I think this is what it was but anyway I might be wrong let's not actually demean the man it might all be my fault but I don't think so and so comes to the grazing ball and of course in those days there were no mobile phones or anything so um, you basically had to rely on people showing up and then if they didn't, you'd ring their home number and if they weren't there, then you would assume they were on the, their way. And I can't remember what happened, but the band, the, the DTs arrived quite early and they were in their dressing room knocking back the um, free booze and the eating the free food that was provided, but there's no sign of Steve. And so the time was coming for him to get there. And I think the time came and went. I think he's supposed to be there. I think he's on stage at one o'clock or two o'clock or something. And he's supposed to be there by 10. And by 11 o'clock, he still wasn't there. So I went to the band and said, look, ring him up. Where is he? Oh, no, he's, he's on the way, they were saying, on the way. But somehow I got his feeling there was something they weren't saying. And it was like, I don't know, because I got a very bad feeling about this from quite early on. Now, I was trying to keep it from the people on the committee if there was anything wrong because they tended to be very anxious because it was their friends and their workmates who were at this thing and they were paying hundreds of pounds to go to it. It was like very expensive. For that, they get free food, they get free, um, they get salmon and stuff and they get like a barbecue and a hog roast and they get their champagne and, and it was all, all free. I mean, all the booze was free, I remember that. I think you might have to pay for champagne on top after your first whatever. But anyway, they were paying a lot of money and they wanted their money's worth obviously so I was going around making sure the bands because there were lots more bands on there were probably bands out in the there were people playing in the in the courtyards and all sorts of things happening so I was trying to do this at the same time and anyway eventually let, let's let's cut the chase he didn't show up and so the band the DT said to me I think it was half an hour after he was supposed to go on stage everybody's going where is he where is he where is it and, and I thought well at least I can get the band on and he made to turn up I was still optimistic halfway through the show and go on and everybody would be reasonably so happy about it. But I, I wasn't happy, I was very annoyed and I was going to ring him and tell him about it next time. I, I tried to phone his house and there was no answer. So, uh, so anyway, cut long story short, the band said they wouldn't go on unless I paid them the whole fee, including his fee. And then I had a bit of a row about that and then eventually, just to get him on stage, I think I paid him that. So I'd lost my money there because I, I would definitely have to give back more money if he didn't show up that's the only way out of this and so anyway they went on stage and um without him and i think you see because again it's all very hazy because i was very angry at this stage i wandered off somewhere and somebody afterwards told me they said something on stage that he wasn't going to come because i'd insulted him or something like that so anyway whether i had or not possibly i had i don't know but if i had then the thing to do would have been for him to to tell me to my face because this was a professional engagement it's like thing. so anyway cut long so short i lost the grazing ball they were very angry with me for not telling them he wasn't there they were very angry with me for doing it. i i gave him back his entire fee as i recall so it meant i earned nothing at all from doing all that and being up all night for for like you know for this thing so six months worth of work and nothing but yet the next year they just booked all their acts through someone else. So that's why Steve Marriott and I ended up not as friends. Um, he never apologised. He said it's because, I mean, well, well, he wouldn't speak to him about it. His agent, Mick, said it was because I'd insulted him or something. But that's, again, that's no reason to do it. Like, so I've, I mean, I've been insulted so often by people. And yet you've got to be professional. You can't just like 
But anyway, poor Steve, he had his demons, but he, but he planned it, let's be fair, and it wasn't good, and um, that's why I we'd fallen out. And then when he died, which is about a year or two after this, I was sad, but I wasn't surprised to find out that it was a cigarette and that he'd been drunk. Well, apparently no, no, because he was there by himself. Well, with his wife, I think, him, his wife, for very sad, but um, poor old Steve, still a great um, singer, great songwriter, and now I think he's fantastic, even though we had our little falling out. So, anyway, if you enjoyed this, please like it below. If you didn't like it, then um, just go away and have a think about it. And then subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. There'll be more of this sort of thing. I'm definitely going to one on Chuck Berry. I've worked with him a bit. Um, maybe Desmond Decker. There's lots of people I've worked with. Georgie Fame. Let's come back and let's talk about this later. I'm picking the ones who are controversial, who I had a bit of a um, run-in perhaps with. Whatever, let's talk later and thank you for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mary Poppies. Don't stay away too long. <laughs>